and exchanged it uh, with the good that was due to Jesus Christ. That's what I want to deal with here because among the things, the evils that the Lord took was our curses. So a divine ordained exchange took place uh, during that time. And in that exchange, uh, <clears throat> we, we got the good, Jesus took the bad. All the evil that was due by justice to our sinful disobedience was visited on Jesus so that all the good that was due to Jesus may be made available to us. I want to repeat that. A divinely ordained exchange took place on the cross where God took what was evil, punished it on Jesus, and took the good that was due to Jesus and made it available to us. That exchange is very important to understand. It's the basis of our deliverance. It's the basis for our freedom. Uh, practically, that day, a serial criminal called Barabbas was proved guilty of murder and robbery and was sentenced for execution. That man, Barabbas, was a murderer, was a robber, was found guilty. Evidence was adduced and he was uh, sentenced to uh, uh, execution. A cross was made for him according to his size. You know, crosses were always made according to the particular size of the criminal. If he was tall, the cross was tall. If he was short, the cross was made short. Uh, but just before his execution, that is the time when Jesus was brought. That is very, very important. This is an event which uh, took place, yet it was depicting, it was clearly showing what was happening in the spirit realm, what God was doing in the spirit was also manifested in the natural. So Jesus was brought at the right time when Barabbas was about to be executed. You understand that he was arrested in the evening and the whole night he was taken through six courts and all the six courts found Jesus innocent. No crime was proved against him, including the court of the Romans, that is uh, Pilate. Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor at the time, and the Jews had no power to execute anybody. That power had been removed from them about 14 years earlier. It had been removed from the Jews. They could try a person, find him guilty, but they had no power to execute the person. So they had to take the person to the Roman court. It's like uh, when you say Mengo has this power, but uh, the power beyond that goes to the central government. So that was the kind of thing. So, yet he was convicted and sentenced to be executed by crucifixion. So Jesus is innocent and Pilate clearly repeats it. I find no basis for a charge against this man. The Jews insisted and so instead he was convicted. Now, he remembered that there was a custom that had been introduced just before he became the governor. That custom was, since these Jews were 
uh, a very problematic people. Every time there was going to be a feast of the Jews, uh, they would uh, ask, you know, one of your, your people has been convicted and choose among the criminals one who can be released to you. So it was, they would be so happy because most of these criminals were used like the zealots who were fighting, who were Bamoyogwa Gwanga. They were the patriots. So Pilate is standing there, as you can see, and he says, I don't see any basis for a charge against this man, Jesus, but because you insist, I'm going to convict him and sentence him to death. Uh, for execution. And so when he brought him forward and said, you tell me of these two, uh, whom should I release? So you can see Jesus standing there in chains while Barabbas is released. The, the whole congregation said, give us Barabbas. What should I do to Jesus? They said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So Jesus took Barabbas' guilt and cross. Remember, a cross had been made for him. Jesus has been innocent and not guilty, yet he's now going to take the guilt. The cross that had been made for Barabbas, Jesus is going to carry it now. Jesus took Barabbas' punishment. Barabbas, in exchange, was acquitted and released. This is the divinely ordained exchange. Barabbas is you and me. We were the ones who were criminals. We were the ones who had been proved guilty. All of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us are the criminals. We, were, we are the robbers, we are the murderers, we are the adulterers. We are Barabbas. When Jesus, who is not guilty, was brought on the scene, Barabbas was acquitted, and Jesus, the innocent, was convicted. Barabbas, the criminal, proved the criminal, was acquitted, and there he is in joy, and he walks out free because Jesus, who is innocent and sinless, has taken on the guilt of Barabbas. So Jesus is in chains while Barabbas is free and rejoicing. That is the divinely ordained exchange. What happened that day, by that incident, showed what was happening in the spirit realm. Jesus carried the cross that had been made for Barabbas and was later crucified on it. So that divine Lord didn't exchange. Now, what do you think Barabbas is? Barabbas. Barabbas, a convicted criminal, a sinner, he's been set free and it's been released. That Barabbas is you and me. For all the evil that was due by justice to our sinful disobedience was punished on Jesus so that all the good that was due by justice to Jesus' sinful, sinless obedience may be made available to us. This is a profound exchange that took place, and this was done by the grace of God. So when Jesus took Barabbas' guilt, cross, punishment, and the death, he was taking what was yours. You and me were guilty, due for punishment, and due for death. So that is what Jesus took. Barabbas was acquitted and release. Barabbas is you and me. Look at what Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 6 says. The punishment 
that brought us peace was upon him. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That is the exchange, the punishment that was to bring us peace was put on him. So he took our punishment. We were then released. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Yet the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We who have gone astray, we who are criminals, we who are, we are the ones who are let free. And Jesus takes that punishment. That is the first exchange. And this is how it goes. Jesus was punished that I may be forgiven. In Uganda, that is the first exchange. The second exchange is found in Isaiah 53, verse 4. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The exchange is that Jesus was wounded that I may be healed. Yes, we are from it. Each of these exchanges is powerful. It is profound. It changes our lives. It transforms us. The third exchange is in 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin to become sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God made him who had no sin to become sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What is the exchange? Jesus was made sin with my sinfulness that I may be made righteous with his righteousness. Yes, we are fully way to be. Orokonuna kwangenze. Nzensoboro kufukwa omutu kilivu. Orokutu kilivu we. That is the third exchange. The fourth exchange is in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we... See Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. i read it again. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might test death for everyone. What is the exchange there? That Jesus died my death, that I may share his life. Yes, that is the fourth exchange. The fifth exchange is in Galatians 3.13. And 14. This week and the next week, all our teaching focuses on this exchange. Everything I'm teaching on the, in this week and next week is the expansion <clears throat> of this particular exchange. What we are dealing with here are the headlines. What we are doing in the week and next week are the details, but the exchange, the particular exchange you are dealing with is here in exchange number five. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, <clears throat> curse is everyone who is hung on the tree. He redeemed us in order the blessing given to Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. I want to explain a few things in here. 
Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? In the Old Testament, we see the children of Israel delivered from Egypt by God's grace before they got the law. They did not get delivered because of the law. They were delivered by God's grace because of the covenant he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. On that basis, God claimed them, delivered them. God told the uh, uh, Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may worship me and serve me. If you don't release my firstborn, I'll kill your firstborn. And Pharaoh refused uh, to do that. And then God delivered them by his grace. But when they got into the wilderness, he gave them the law. The law had two sides. If you obey the law, you'd be blessed. If you disobeyed the law, you had to be cursed. The curse is the product of disobeying God. Now, in one of the things that God had told the Israelites was that if somebody hung on the cross or on the tree, he would become a curse. That one is stated in Deuteronomy uh, that if anybody is hung on a tree, he becomes a curse. Now, Satan, without considering the written text, tried all means in the 42 months of Jesus' ministry, that is three and a half years, he tried all means to kill Jesus, and he would not. He could not because his days, were, his, his time was not yet. The Bible kept saying, he, they wanted to kill him, and he slipped out of their sight because his time had not come. But on that day, when his time had come, he told his disciples, I'm going to die. Peter rebuked Jesus and said, you have no faith, Jesus. How do you say? He said, no, 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 it's not an issue of faith. I'm doing the will of God. So, but uh, the... the the children of it, I mean, the, the, the disciples themselves, of course, could not fully understand because they even wanted to fight and that. But Jesus clearly indicated that this is the reason I came. I can get my father send a contingent of angels and they would fight and I would not be crucified. So his crucifixion did not come as a shock. It was part of the destiny. Although uh, it was done by the devil, God had foreseen it, and he had indicated in the law that once you are put on the cross, you become a curse. This was included in the law in order that later on, when Jesus is hung on the cross, he takes our curses, the curses of disobeying the law of God, so when Jesus hung on the cross, God took advantage of what the devil had done. Remember that even the bad things that the devil intends against you, God turns them out for good. That you should never forget. I talked about it yesterday, that every day or every time the enemy attacks you, it's because God has allowed him. But the only reason God allows the devil to attack you is because out of that attack, you should be able to release some of your inheritance. So the, our inheritance is released piecemeal, one piece by one piece, one piece after the next, so that uh, through these attacks, you may finally uh, overcome the enemy, Satan, and enter into your full inheritance. Our inheritance is released every time the enemy attacks us. God uses it to give you some deeper revelation of him. And every time he does that, you enter into your inheritance. One of such activities is here. 
when Jesus hung on the cross, he fulfilled that uh, section in the law which says that everybody who hangs on the tree becomes a curse. So he became a curse. God took advantage of what the devil had done and took your curses and my curses and all our curses, he put them on Jesus. That is the same way he had done with sicknesses. So he took all the sicknesses, he put them on Jesus. He took all the sins, he put them on Jesus. All the evil, all the evil that was due by justice to our sinful disobedience was visited on Jesus, was put on Jesus Christ so that in exchange, he may give us the good. So cast is everyone who is hung on the tree. That is the statement that is stated in Deuteronomy 21. He redeemed us from the curse in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentile through Christ Jesus. Why? So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So God has always wanted to bless us. But he, once somebody is under curse, even if you try to bless him, the curse will come upon him and overtake him. So God had to deal with the curse of disobedience, of rebellion against God, going astray in our own way, being proud, all this we do. And so God knew that if we were to leave it to us, to do something about it, we would not manage. So he prepared the exchange for us so that uh, Jesus takes the curse in order that the blessing may be made available to us. Uh, <clears throat> That is the fifth exchange. What does it say? Jesus bore my curse that I may share his blessing. Yes, we are to Allah. It's called Mochange, and then Savore, Okugabana, Omksisabwe. So Jesus took the curse. So Galatians is the basis for deliverance. This week and next week, Make sure you confess this scripture as many times as possible, whether 1,000 years or 10,000 times, whether 1,000 times or 10,000 times, you can never fully exhaust any scripture. So I want to encourage you to keep reading it, saying it, repeating it, repeating it, projecting it, proclaiming it, shouting at it. This is the basis because it moves from your head into your spirit and releases the revelation. And once the revelation is released, the power, the anointing that activates it in your life comes true. So that is the exchange. Now exchange number six, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you might, uh, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. This, again, is easy. You see the word rich, it appears twice. And the word poor and poverty also appears. So Christ, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Bible talks about the grace. By his grace, he came and he, he was rich. Where, where, when, where was he rich? He was rich in heaven. He was rich when he walked here on earth. So he had the Father's credit card, meaning he did not lack anything whenever he wanted it. But on the cross, Jesus became poor. Why would he become poor? So that uh, he, so that his poverty may, uh, I mean, sorry, that uh, uh, he may take our poverty, so that we may enjoy his abundance. What he had in heaven and here on earth as he walked here, he lived in abundance. So he made that available to us by taking our poverty and the poverty curse. Look at the exchange. Jesus endured my poverty 
that I may share his abundance. It is important to repeat these statements because each of them is loaded, loaded with truth, loaded with power. Yes, Yagumila, Natuaro Wavuange, Zenfunobu, Obunji, Obomuika, Obomuksagwe. Obunji Obomuika is his abundance. Omuika, Omuika is how God operates, God operates in an abundance. That is the exchange. Exchange number seven, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthan, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because what happened on the cross is a moment he took our sins upon himself. The father turned away his face from his son. This had never happened for millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, pentrillions, sextillions, septillions of years. They had never separated. Now, because of our sin, because of our sicknesses, because of our poverty, the father turns away his face. That we get on the day we are born again. Uh, the exchange, what is the exchange here? The exchange is important to understand another scripture here in uh, Ephesians 1, 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. You notice here, Jesus is crying for being forsaken. While Paul is emphasizing how we are accepted. So the exchange is Jesus was rejected that I may be accepted. Yes, Though that is the exchange. That's why he cried, My father, why have you rejected me or forsaken me? That exactly happened because the father turned away his face when Jesus was carrying, he was made sin. That took place, exchange number eight. Jesus was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Jesus was despised, Jesus was not esteemed, and this was all because of us. What? Uh, <coughs> The apostles in chapter 5, verse 12 and 13 of Acts, we enjoyed that exchange. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. They were highly esteemed by the people. This is the exchange. When we walk and obey God, that's what we enjoy. What is the exchange? Number eight, it is Jesus was despised that I may be esteemed. We are esteemed now because he was despised. Being esteemed is the opposite of being despised. Number nine, exchange number nine, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfect of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. What is the bad there is shame. But in Hebrews 2.10, in bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God should make them, should not, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. So Jesus was made perfect through suffering to bring many sons to glory. That is purpose. What is he after? To bring many sons and daughters to glory. This is what we got from Jesus' suffering. So Jesus endured my shame 
because he was stripped naked, that I may share his glory. Notice when we were reading that he let us fix our eyes on the on Jesus, the author and perfect of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. So he took the shame, and in exchange, he brought many sons to glory. So in the exchange, he gave us glory where there has been shame. That is the exchange. Jesus endured my shame that I may share his glory. Yes, ya gumiro kuswala kwange, nze nsuburo kugabana kuchitibwache. Those are the nine exchanges uh, that place on the cross. And that, those exchanges include everything that would ever need in this life to live a godly life. Those exchanges, you should repeat continually, declare them continually. So in summary, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting men sinned against them, and he has committed to us the message of a ministry of reconciliation. Take God's love and message to the whole world. Tell them God is not mad anymore at them what they are missing. Tell them two things. What God has done that is no longer mad at them, explain to them what they are missing in the Lord. This is the message. Uh, the God, God's love, God is gospel, the gospel of his kingdom. Those are the exchanges, and I've emphasized the fact that exchange number five refers to what we are dealing with this week. This exchange in Galatians chapter uh, uh, 3, verse 13. Now, I, I need also to add something about Abraham. God told Abraham to leave his country, to leave all of the Chaldees, because there was a curse there, his father's and a tribe and family and clan were involved in witchcraft, and so they were under curse. God brought him out and says, I'll bless you and make you a blessing. Through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So he took him through different tests, especially at the last test of Isaac. When he obeyed and was ready to give Isaac, the Bible says that the Lord stopped him, says, do not kill the, the lad, the child. Uh, I know now that you fear me and love me. And from now, I'm going to bless you in the, everything I'm going to bless you. Chapter 24 of Genesis says, God blessed Abraham in everything. God blessed Abraham in everything. Uh, Genesis 24, verse 1 and 2 emphasizes the fact that Abraham was blessed in everything. So once Jesus came, he came as a child of Abraham, and he inherited all the blessings of Abraham. So we who are in Christ are coheres together with Jesus in the blessings of Abraham. So he redeemed us in order that we, that the blessing given to Abraham might come upon us. You see, this blessing we are only for Jews, but in Christ we become partakers through Christ Jesus we are partakers of Abraham's blessing so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Thank God for that blessing. Thank you, uh, God. Thank God for the exchange that took place on the cross because by that exchange, we now share in the abundance of the blessings that were promised to Abraham and his seed. His seed is Jesus, and you are in Jesus, and so you are partaker of that blessing. That is exchange number five. 